Hey everyone, this is Corinne Lafon, your favorite host, your only radio host, broadcasting to you from Trinidad and Tobago on Between the Lines. It's a beautiful day today, absolutely beautiful. I, you know, I always start my show talking about the day. It's sunny, I'm seeing some nice cotton clouds, puffy and nice, and um, blue skies. And the trees are swaying as they normally should. Once there's wind, I'm so thankful. I'm thankful to be here. I'm, I'm thankful to be here with my lovely guest, Avilon Bailey. And she has a beautifully long bio, but I'm going to try my best to do justice and tell you a bit about her and then bring her on and she can add and minus and multiply as she sees fit. So she calls herself an emotional relief catalyst. And I might just end up reading everything here. So she, it was, well, she was in a nursing career. I don't know if she still is, but from a young child, she could see that others, she could see things that others couldn't, beginning with the energy fields around the trees and bushes. At the age of seven, she was starting to use her inner vision. She realized she had a gift, like many of us out here. Some of us are not tapping into that. The beautiful thing about Avalon is that she realized she was different. She was unique. Let me use the word unique. And she took advantage of that and took advantage of it in a negative way, but in a way that she realized she was given something that she had to make use of. When she was eight, she had an interesting experience in school that made it clear to her that something was with her and helping her. This was the beginning of her developing a deeply personal relationship with her inner guidance, which has guided her on a journey that is special and unique. She has always had the calling to help others, and as a nurse, she fulfilled that desire following a traditional path, earning her master's degree along the way. But she knew there was more to healing than just traditional approaches. Parallel to her nursing career, she has been, uh, she has taken a metaphysical path where over 30 years she has been intimately drawn into energy healing and through that many experiences with psycho psycho psychometry, I have to take my time, auras, meditation, past life regressions, rebirthing, crystals, channeling, inspired writing and more. She has become more adept at perceiving energy and using her unique gifts to help people. Her in-depth exploration of working with and understanding how stored energy affects other persons has led to her, you know, creating emotional relief catalyst, no-touch energy healing modality, which can be done over the phone or via internet. And I know she's working on me right now as I speak. My sessions, or her sessions, see, I'm reading from the script. Her sessions are loving, calm, and gentle. And when we go to her website, you would hear how soft that is one of the things that i picked up in her video it's she's soft she's calm you don't need somebody in this field being all hype and excited and worked up you need calm and, a, and to attract a gentle presence so her sessions are loving calm and gentle and are not about reliving anything most feel very you know light after being freed of their emotional baggage and we're going to be talking a lot about that things that we are carrying with us from our past, from now that we're carrying into our future. As an emotional relief catalyst, she has helped free people from the stuck or stored emotions within their energy fields that interfere with the ability to experience a healthy and fulfilling life. Things that are blocking us from having success, happiness, joy, and fulfillment. Many have experienced freedom from physical pain, emotional pain, release from unhealthy habits, limiting beliefs or thought patterns and more. Others have gained clarity for their life and spiritual path. Just as each person is unique, just like her, each of her private sessions is unique as well and always for the person's benefit. I want to welcome Avilon Bailey to Between the Lines. Welcome, Avilon. Oh, thank you. I'm happy to be here, Corrine. It's great to have you. And I am going to switch the video. I'm going to ask you to show yourself your beautiful self as i will myself here we go which i should have done before <laughs> all right i don't know my gray hair is showing and i'm looking like i'm i'm uh, um what you call it now like an angel i always say anytime i wear white you see this aura <laughs> yes i see your glow it's beautiful yes i see a glow anytime i wear white 
So I'm not seeing you yet. I'm still seeing your name. Oh, here we go. Let me fix that. Yeah. See how How's beautiful that? you are. Yes, you're beautiful. So there we are. Yes. And let me kind of switch over, do a screen share here and get to your website. Yes, and before I forget, or before we forget, there is going to be a free giveaway and we're going to switch to that, uh, that Avilon is going to be giving to you free of, of charge. So remind me, Avilon, to switch to that page. And of course, you, you're seeing a, her website here. We're going to play this video in a bit after we talk. Um, but you can also put in your name and email address here to get access to this audio, free 11 minute audio recording, Release Hurt and Pain. So Avilon, what are we talking about today? I don't even remember, but even, <laughs> but even, even I think it's about, you know, letting go, a lot about letting go, you know, all those stored emotions is what we're going to be talking about. Um, I'm passionate about it as, as, as I am with a number of topics that revolve around joy, happiness, and fulfillment. Because we came here in this, on this earth, in this world, not to be stressed, not to take on things, not to live unhappy. I believe in abundance. I believe in success. I believe it was meant for us. But somehow we just get caught up in everything else that has nothing to do with us. Everything else that people say, like we were talking offline, um, or what people think is for us. They put us in a box, in a frame, and they think that's, that's, that's the way you should live. You know, that's you. <laughs> and they dictate to you. And if you try to do things out of that box, you're deviant, you're everything else, except what they want you to be. You know, and um, it's important for us to come out of that box and be who we are meant to be. And if, persons don't like it, including your family and so-called loved ones. Notice I said so-called loved ones, because if they love you, they will accept you. Then you need to let them go. So there's a lot of baggage, as you talk about in, in, your, in your bio. And I want after this session, after this interview, that people can get tips, approaches, connect and the things that we are saying to resonate with so that they can know they can first identify because i think the first thing is to accept stop pretending stop putting the covers over your head or putting your head in the sand whichever way you're doing it and just come to your senses and realize this is what i'm going through i haven't been facing it face it head on take the bull by the horn as they say and accept realize this is what you're going through this is what you have put yourself in because you have given persons and yourself the permission nobody has forced you you have allowed it so you have to take responsibility and how you can get out of that to move on yeah so yeah back to you straight to you now avilon you do the talking i'm going to do the shutting up <laughs> oh okay well you covered a lot so i don't know if i can backtrack and and address each point because you made some excellent points and so i think what i'll do is i'll just start maybe with a chronological approach and that is mm -hmm. we can become affected by circumstances and situations that surround us even when we're in the womb I was so amazed when that was first shown to me. And I'll give you an example um, yeah. of when I first experienced that. You know, I'm used to dealing with people who have things they've accumulated as they have gone through their lives. But in this particular instance, I was working with a, a gentleman whose wife brought him to me mm -hmm. because he had frequent angry outbursts and they had been married a very long time but she had left him several times because it got to be too much wow. and she understood where it came from he had been very abused as a child wow. so she when she heard about me she brought him to me and it all happened so quickly that 
when he and I sat together, I didn't even know his name. All I knew is that they had been married a long time, he had frequent angry outbursts, and he was abused as a child. So since I didn't even know his name, I just said, tell me about yourself. <laughs> and, he, and he started talking, but I went into um, the energies and I closed my eyes frequently because I do use my inner vision. Mm -hmm. And what the energy showed me, it was like an emotional zip line and it went all the way back from the present moment, all the way back into the, when he was in the womb. And it showed me that. And what it showed me is that the circumstances which were unfortunate that were going on while he was in the womb began to affect him. And that the energy said that from the moment of his birth, he didn't stand a chance at having a decent life. And that in these moments, in these sessions, he is now receiving that which he was never given, which was love. And so I spoke with the wife the next day and again in two weeks, and he had not had any angry outbursts because all of that emotional trauma had been healed. Wow. And so, yes. And so um, there were other um, sessions that I've had that also went into the womb. And again, it was circumstances that surrounded the pre-birth or dur even during the birth that affected the person. Um, yeah. I want to touch on that. There's a program here that I learned of since coming back to Trinidad because I was living in Jamaica for 21 years. I came back here in July 2017 and I've learned of a program called Original Pain Therapy. I don't know if that is similar to what you're doing, but it sounds along the same lines where it goes right back to being in the womb because a lot of people don't realize that that is really where a lot of things are taking place. You know, um, a lot of impacts. They think, oh, you're being formed, you're being formed, you don't mean anything. And probably that's why abortion is such a, a big thing to people because some people are saying, you're not, uh, you're not fully formed yet, you're not living, you're not, you know, so you can be aborted, but they don't realize you're, you're a, a being, a living being in there, your energy. Um, so a lot of things happen in the womb before we even come out. A lot of things are predetermined even before we come out into this, into this world. Um, I think what you're doing, you know, is similar to that original pain therapy. And some people are very afraid of dealing with that. It's shocking. It's um, <laughs> dealing with anything is going to be shocking, whether it is yesterday, this morning, or from birth. Because it means, as I said, coming face to face, accepting, dealing with something that could really bring you pain. Well, uh, what I would say to that is I'm not familiar with that technique, but mm -hmm. the beauty of the energies that I work with is mm -hmm. it is not about reliving anything. It's very gentle, calm, and loving, and yeah. the person doesn't have to recall anything. And so the energies find the source of the emotional pain and they clear it. And so that's why a person feels lighter or sometimes they'll take a nap afterwards yeah. or they'll feel energetic because it's not about confronting anything. You don't have to recall any details. You don't have to confirm. Mm -hmm. These energies don't need that. They already mm -hmm. know and they, they're here to support the good of each person in the way that um, is the most gentle and loving for them. I so, like how you say that. I like how you yeah. say that. So there's nothing confrontational. There's nothing to feel like that. So when you... When you talk about your inner vision, now people listen to this, they might say, ooh, that sounds very mm, spiritually, you know, ghosty. <laughs> like, I want you to help persons to understand when, when you talk about your inner vision, because you had this gift from a child and you realized this and you, you have developed it, you have learned, you know? Yes. Well, if you, if you think about what is the imagination, you close your eyes and you, you can see things in your mind's eye. We talk mm -hmm. about the mind's eye. Mm -hmm. right? So it's really not, it's not woo woo. It's not um, woo -woo difficult to right. understand. <laughs> yeah. It, it's something we all have and you can yeah. just call it imagination if you'd like. Mm -hmm. But the first time I realized it was in second grade, we would have have spelling bees and we would all go to the front of the room and when I was given my word to spell I could see it in my mind's eye and so I would just spell it and I would yeah. be the last one standing and so uh, I just thought every guys you know everybody can everybody can do this yeah. why they don't I don't know but yeah I will also say I will also say this that 
the things that I experienced, being able to see the energy field around the trees and the bushes at the age of six, and um, using my inner vision at the age of seven, and then connecting with my inner guidance. I'll go ahead and tell that story. Uh, I was in third grade, and I was at home one weekend reading a uh, Nancy Drew mystery novel. Yay! I used to be a Nancy Drew. Yay! I was a Nancy Drew fan. <laughs> yes, absolutely. So I was reading uh, one, one of those novels, and I was almost finished with the book, but I decided to go out and play. So I started to close the book, and something said, how many pages do you have left? And so I counted them, and I counted 10 pages. Yeah. And then that, that little something said, um, finish it. Uh, no, no, excuse me. They, the inner voice said, how many pages do you have left? And I looked at it and there were a hundred pages, let's just say I'm on page 90. So that's 10 pages. Mm -hmm. And then that, that inner prompting said, count the pages. And so I counted the pages and I counted 11. And I thought, well, that's not right. So I looked again, say a hundred pages in the book. I'm on yeah. page 90. That's 10. I yeah. counted it again and it was 11. And I just looked at it. And I thought, now, how can that be? Yes. And then, and then I realized, oh, you have to count the page you're on. That's right. So I said, okay, I closed the book and I went out to play. And then later that week in school on a test as a bonus question was that exact scenario. You're reading a book. It has so many pages. You're on page such and such. How many pages do you have left to read? And I had been shown that you subtract and then add one. So I did that, turned it in. When the teacher gave the test back, she said only one student in the class answered the bonus question correctly. And I kind of put my head down because I was a little embarrassed. And when class ended, my classmates came up to me and they said, how did you know that? How did you know how to get the answer? Yeah. Just said, I just said, I don't know. I just knew. But that's when I realized that something was helping me. Now, yeah. here's the point that, that I was going to share with you. And that is, I grew up in a very large family. And you would think that I would be busy and distracted yeah. and uh, have lots of things to do, but it wasn't so. I was by myself a lot. I spent a lot of quiet time. And that is when I was able to connect with these inner gifts that, we, that I feel we all have. The yeah. gift of, of vision, being able to see the uh, energy fields, the gift of uh, the inner vision, and the gift of the, the guidance that is within us. We yeah. all have that, but it's in the quiet moments that you're able to hear it and make those connections is how I feel about it. That's right. And you see a couple of things that, that resonate with me and a similar situation with that spelling and, and uh, not the spelling, the, the amount of pages. Similar things has happened to me. But you talk about quiet, and what I find is that people are so busy now, Avalon. They are busy, and there's a lot of noise around them. And they allow a lot of noise. And for persons like me that love quiet and stillness, because I need to tap into that. I need to hear when, when things are speaking to me, when my source, when my guidance is speaking to me. They're like, why are you so quiet? Why do you, you know, and they, they argue with me as to I'm, I'm, I'm fussy. I'm the one that's fussy. You know, because I want quiet, <laughs> you know, and everything is a problem to me. And I'm like, why can't you just be still? I have no problem being still. Mm -hmm. I am, I am, I am good with myself. I am yes. not, I, I can live with myself in stillness, in quiet. And I see persons, and I've said this in another, one of my other episodes recently, that persons who are caught up in noise to me from what I have observed clearly they are not able to deal with themselves they are not because once it is quiet like they go crazy it's like they may hear their voice they may hear some other voice and it's like they are not able to deal with it and I have no problem hearing my voice or the voice of my source I love the conversations that I have with with my source or my god or my inner you know whatever i just i love them i revel in it you know and and i don't understand why people just don't realize and we have it the thing about just like you said we is not accessible to you especially or to me we are not special or chosen in that way it's just that we and you know as i'm saying that you know it takes me back to the bible persons that were chosen or deemed the chosen a person who accepted the role that just came to me because I'm sure there were people 
that could have done fabulous things back in those days. But because they ran, because they were busy, because there were a lot of noise. So there will be people that accept the role, took on the challenge, was able to hear. And that's why they became so famous and they're in the Bible now. <laughs> you know, that, that is what just came to me. So we can all be famous. We can all be known for something, but we have to submit. We have to accept. And, and I will tell you, I've gone through a journey past few years where, you know, building my spirituality, I went through a time where I, I, I want to submit, but in my submission, I know, Avilon, I know that my source, my God, whatever you want to call him or her, would ask me to do things that I might say, oh my Lord, I don't know if I could do that. <laughs> you know, the fear. And because of that role that he may call me to do, I mean, I may think to myself, I'm not ready or it's, I'm not the one or I, you know, I, I kind of took a step back. I was holding back. And then I said, what is there to fear? If, 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 of course, he gave me something to do or he asked me to do something, he must know I'm very capable of doing it and he will provide whatever I need to do it. And that is when I said, you know what? This is it. This is it. I am just going to submit. Give in. Just give it up. <laughs> and, just, and, just you know, let, and just let it go. I can relate to that because uh, in the more recent past, when I was still in nursing, mm -hmm. I was looking for something new to do. So I was looking at nursing jobs, and there were several <coughs> that, that were very appropriate for me. I was qualified. It's what I had done before. It was a really good fit. Mm -hmm. But those weren't opening up for me. But what was opening up for me was a job that was an hour away on the highway, that was in a sector of healthcare that I didn't want, and it was an actual job that I had no interest in doing. So nothing matched what I was looking for, but for some reason it was opening up. And so I just decided, well, let me follow this. So I followed it all the way through to the interview, all the way through to being hired, and all the way through into this very long, orientation and so I'm sitting in this orientation thinking why am I here but I just stayed with it because it all it opened up almost effortlessly and wow. what I came to what I came to realize I only stayed there a couple of months um, after I started the job mm -hmm. but what it did is it put me in an area where, where I was able to meet someone who ended up giving me a new job completely different where I could work from home and what that allowed me to do unbeknownst to me, is take care of my mom uh, when she needed it. So I was able to work from home and take care of her. And so even though my ego or my mind couldn't see the logic and the sense of taking that job that didn't match, the inner guidance can see around the corner. It knows what's coming. And so to trust it, even uh. though the mind can't figure it out, to trust it um, is always going to be for you, your good. Avilon. <laughs> Avilani is going to make me cry on radio. <laughs> You're absolutely right. And this is what I say to people. When we, we don't have the power to see, like you say, around the corner. And for those who are job hunting, I mean, I'm, I'm also in my transition here to Trinidad again. I am job hunting. And we wonder why certain things are not opening up. And I say, you know what? Those doors are closing for whatever reason. I don't know. And I'm not fighting it. Wherever I'm supposed to go, that's what that, I'm open to it. You know, let me add to this. You said something very um, wise. So I knew someone and she had a sign, little post-it sign on her computer. And it said, there's nothing upstream that I want. And I said, what does that mean? And so what you just touched on, if there's resistance, 
that is swimming upstream. You are not in your flow. When you are mm -hmm. in your flow, just like I explained, it just right. opened up. And it's not a matter of my mind being able to make sense of it. It's just mm -hmm. that my inner guidance says, you're mm -hmm. in the flow and I'm taking you where it's for your good. Mm -hmm. and so it is trusting. I worked with one lady who she was involved with taking care of her parents one at a time. And when the, when the second parent finally passed, she mm -hmm. knew that her calling was very unique and special. It was working with sacred land mm -hmm. around the world. Mm -hmm. But the reason she came to me is that she felt something needed to, to be done before she could embark on that. Mm -hmm. And so I worked with her. Um, she was in Europe, worked mm -hmm. with her over the internet and a lot of energies that she had been carrying with her were cleared and, mm -hmm. That is what the sacred lands wanted mm -hmm. is they wanted her energy field cleared so that when she came and became a part of that sacred land to do documentaries, um, she brought with her beautiful energies that vibrated or matched the sacred land. And so, you know, you talk about, you don't know how you're going to do something, but you'll be led. The right people will show up. That's and if, right. if there's trust and there's inner guidance that you're listening to, it will work out. Yeah, yeah. It makes no sense stressing. As I say, why worry? Why worry? Exactly. It's not helping you. Why worry? And I, well, I, the so uh, what is the antidote to worry? Because worry is a very low vibration and it takes a lot of energy and worry is focusing yes. on that which, that yes. which you, don't, you don't want. Yes. And so the antidote is to have faith and to, you can use your imagination and visualize yes. or even speak what it is you do want. I have a very simple... Um, affirmation that I say. I used to have a complicated one when I was in nursing. Uh, <laughs> I used to wake up every morning and say, I call upon the universe to prepare my way that all goes well, smoothly, correctly, effectively, efficiently, positively, successfully, and safely. Because oh that's what God. I needed. That's, that's what I needed as a nurse to feel like, okay, my day is going to be okay. But what it did is I would do that before I would walk through the door. I would, I would get into a very calm, centered space before I walked into my um, office building. Right. But what it did, it didn't guarantee a perfect day, mm -hmm. but it put me in a space where I could handle whatever did show up from a, a place of clarity and calm. Mm -hmm. Good. So Good. I, have a simple, I have a simpler version of that now. Let's and, hear it. Uh, you know, Let's if, hear if it. it. If it resonates, use it. You're free to use it. So yes. what I say now is I call upon the universe to bring to me the outcomes that are best for me. Because I, again, I may not know what's best for me because I, I can't see around the corner, but yes. I will trust that yes. the universe, divine source, God, whatever you want to say, brings to me the outcomes that are best for me or the outcomes that are best for my loved one if I'm yes. worried about someone. And so that is the antidote for me for worry is yes. to is to spin um, it into a positive way so that you're putting higher vibration energies uh, towards that person. Trust and faith. And, and to be able to have the openness, Avilon, to, to see the positive of everything. You know, when I'm traveling and with persons and they're like, why did that happen? And didn't you see? I'm like, there's a reason for that. Or, you know, they might be complaining, I turn things around. And when people hear me speak, they're like, you turn everything into, into something positive. I'm like, yeah, because there is a reason. There, there is a lesson to be learned from this. And what you need to ask yourself is, what, what can I learn from this to be a better person? What can I learn? Wow. Yeah. For persons who, we talk, I mean, we have, we have kind of shifted, but I mean, there's this interlocking with, with what we are discussing. For persons who are holding on to things, we talk about emotional baggage and stored emotions that are blocking them from moving on, from letting go. Yeah. Yes. I'll, I'll give you an example. Um, I, have a, I had a woman in her early 60s who had been um, abused by a family member when she was very young. And, mm -hmm. and all those years, she carried the shame and guilt because... Many times the child thinks they did something wrong or it's their fault. And so they carry not only the pain, the emotional pain from that abuse, but shame and guilt. So I worked with her by phone and was able to clear that energy. And she felt like she had been freed from an emotional prison. She was so exuberant. Mm -hmm. And uh, we worked a few more times because she wanted to work on other things. But the last time I spoke with her, she was back to playing the piano and she said the music would just flow through her and mm -hmm. she started to record it. And so it unleashed 
and unlocked this gift, this talent that she had. And so that happens frequently that we carry things within us that block our own true gifts, our own true self, and that those energies don't belong to us. Uh, and, and the beauty of it, the reason these energies have come forth, and, and I'll just say this, um, I've worked with energy for over 30 years. I have various energy practitioner certifications, but this technique came through after becoming adept and working with energies and being able to perceive them for so long, for so many years. Okay. And, I, and I'll tell you how it first showed up. I was working with a woman in her early 40s. She was mm -hmm. a little bit overweight, diabetic. Mm -hmm. And um, her issue was she could not stop eating fast food. Whoa. And her, her husband was getting on her case. Even when she wasn't hungry, she would go through the fast food line. Whoa. And so as she was telling me about it, I could, this is the first time this gift showed up. I could see it in her energy field. I could see the energy that was connected to the fast food habit. And so when I tapped into the energy, it had to do with experiences she had with her brother and her father growing up. And so I cleared the energy mm -hmm. and I saw her two weeks later at a social gathering and she was glowing, but I asked her, how is the fast food eating? And she said, oh, I haven't had any. I haven't even thought about it. I don't miss it. Yeah. And that was the first time that gift had shown up for me. Wow. It came very organically and, and naturally. And so these energies have come forth to help free us from that which interferes with our ability to love ourselves because the truth of who we are is love. If you look at a baby, look at a baby's eyes. Oh, innocent. In they sense. shine, they glow, and they laugh, and they Beautiful. smile. That, that's the truth of who we are. No inhibitions, not afraid of anything, just... T total trust in life. Yes, yes. And, uh, and so we do tend to lose that over, over our years of growing up because we oh, start God. accumulating other people's God. opinions and judgments. Yeah. And so the work I do helps to free people from those opinions, judgments, and also emotional wounds that um, don't belong to us and we can let them go and we can become and get to know the truth of who we are and live our purpose, whatever that's, that might be. That's right, that's right. We need to continually be working on ourselves, Avilon. It's a, it's a constant work in progress. It's not like, oh, well, you have released these things and so yeah, you're happy now and whatever. It's a continuous work in progress because we are, we are living in the world, yes. I tell people I may live in the world, but I'm not of the world. You know, it doesn't mean just I need to take in everything. I, I choose what I consume, whether in my body, whether in my mind. So not because I'm physically here, yes, I'm physically here. Everybody could see me, touch me, whatever. But I'm not of the world. And some people don't get that. And that's okay. You don't get it. That's fine. <laughs> you know, I, I have a way of framing that and I'll share it with you and, you know, it might resonate, might not, doesn't, doesn't matter to me, but, um, you know, some people want to escape while they're here in the physical, they want to go to the astral plane or the non-physical planes. And, and I used to do that. I've been on the metaphysical journey for a long time. So I explored a lot of things, mm -hmm. but I came to the, to the conclusion for myself that when I am awake here, I clock in and I do the job that I'm meant to do in this physical dimension, in this role, in this person. I have a job to do. Mm -hmm. And so when I wake up, I clock in. And when I go to sleep at night, I clock out. Oh. <laughs> so I don't, try, I don't try to escape while I'm, while I'm in my waking consciousness. I am yeah. here fully present. Yeah, yeah. And it's the same way. You're fully present when you clock out <laughs> and you're in yes. another realm. Yeah, you're present wherever you are. Yeah? yeah, yes. Interesting, interesting. I wanna, I wanna just remind persons to put in your name and email address here to get that free eleven minute, eleven minute audio recording. Release hurt and pain, and in order to get that other free uh, giveaway that Avilon is doing, if you notice, I am. All I did was add free at the end forward slash free. To her website, Avilon Bailey, that's A V I L O N E Bailey.com forward slash free. And it's a seven minute reset to relaxation to release the greatest you. Tell us about this free giveaway. Yes, this seven minute uh, reset to relaxation is you can play it anytime that mm -hmm. you just want to 
regain your calm and your balance. One person um, plays it at nighttime because it really helps her get into a calmer yeah. uh, state where she can release the, the thoughts and the concerns of the day. Mm -hmm. And so it, it's really just to help a person um, just literally push the reset button mm -hmm. because we function so much better when we can come from a calm and balanced place. And it's, it's easy. And yeah. some people will play it in the background yeah. so that it can affect the household. So you can use it any way that's beneficial to you. Yeah. There's no limit. Yeah. I, I do my meditations on morning. It's different, but I do my, well, gratitude. Well, throughout the day, I'm doing my gratitude. Right throughout the day. But in the morning, I, I lie in my bed when it's quiet and I just do my gratitude and decide how I want my day to go, etc. And in the night, of course, I continue my thank yous. I line my best. And as I play a meditation audio, you know, my affirmations. And, and I do my gratitudes, like I'm saying, and just run through as many things that I can, you know, and just say how I would like my day to be the next day. And, you know, I, I do that. I have to go in a meditative state. Sometimes I fall asleep and then I get, I jump up and then I realize, oh, I continue my meditation again, <laughs> you know, because it is so relaxing to do. Um, so it's, it's become a routine for me and I feel awkward when I don't do it, you know? Um, yes, it, it does, it's a beautiful habit. And I, I'll say this about meditation because people have ideas about what meditation is. And some may think that you have to sit in a sitting position that's uncomfortable with your fingers no. in a certain certain handhold and right. you can do you can do that if you want you can do mm -hmm. it for hours if you want right. but it's not necessary a meditation can be less than a minute of because course. it's just it's just stopping for a moment perhaps closing your eyes or even just looking at the sky or the trees you're just um yeah. doing something that's different from what's causing yeah. stress yeah and allowing your mind to wander just ease and it doesn't have to be morning and night although that's a preferable time you can be at lunch and probably just sit, you know, by the sea, depending on where you're working, come out of the office, the business, and just find a quiet place to sit and just enjoy your meal. And while you're just allowing your mind to just yes. wonder, you know, that, yeah. that thing when, yeah. your teachers, when your teachers used to want to beat you and tell you things in class, stop, stop gazing outside, stop whatever. Those are the, those are the times, you know, when, when See, it's the best time for creativity. That's right. They used to say, stop daydreaming. Well, your daydreaming is your connection to the non-physical. Daydreaming is using your imagination. And they, they kind of grind that out of you. Yes. That's, that's a beautiful space to be in. And yeah. so if you're having a stressful day, whether it's at home, at work, or wherever, and, and even if you need to go into the utility closet just to close the door right. and find some space and just breathe yeah. for 15 seconds, just focus on your breath. Yeah. and just breathe for 15 seconds and then go and re-enter your world again, mm -hmm. it will help. Yeah. It will yeah. help. I want to play this, this video here. I think it's pretty short. It's a minute, so let's do that. Hi, I'm Avalon Bailey, founder of the Emotional Relief Catalyst Energy Healing Modality, and I am so glad you are here. I am excited to help you with issues caused by stored emotions, from wounds, hurts, traumas, that can manifest as physical pain, emotional pain, stress, anxiety, and more, some of which you may be experiencing. My clients come to me for the release of the emotions, the energies that are interfering with experiencing a healthy and fulfilling life. And I want to help you too. But first, I want you to experience one of my energy healings where I open the flow of loving, gentle, calm energies to help you and to support you in the release of current birth pain, whether it's from the past or the present, that's interfering with your physical or emotional well-being. And I want to give this to you for free. I normally charge for this in my private sessions and my group programs, but I want to give this to you for free because I know it can help you. Whatever you're going through, whether it's from the past or from the present, I want you to experience the energies I work with so that if you are interested in taking it further, you will have an idea of how I work. So enter your name and email into the box next to me. and You'll be taken to a page where you can listen to a free energy healing recording that can help you gently release hurt or pain from the past or present. 
you also know that I'm looking forward to connecting with you soon. All right, let me see if I can get back. Yay, all right. So that's beautiful and that's just introducing your, your free audio so that people can get an understanding of, of what you do before they um, actually go into your programs so that they can feel comfortable, yeah? Yes, yes. And know that they're safe. You know, um, many people grow up not feeling safe in the world. And so yeah. these energies uh, surround them and embrace them in such love that they're able to relax into it and allow the energies to go and clear away uh, the hurts and the pains and the wounds. Uh, I've had uh, women who were stuck in toxic relationships. Uh, and yes. Let's not go so, there. I mean. <laughs> yeah. You know, sometimes they're still in it. Um, yeah. These energies will work with relationship dynamics. These yeah. energies have worked with family dynamics. I'll give you an example. I worked with one lady who was in her 60s. She came to see me and she was getting ready to go spend some time with her daughter mm -hmm. for a week. And she had been doing this once a year. And her daughter uh, was married, had a couple of kids. And the woman said that she and her daughter had a contentious relationship. They didn't get along. And the woman said she didn't get along with the in-laws. And it was really a miserable time. But she wanted to let the grandchildren know that she wanted to be a part of their lives. Mm -hmm. And so she asked if I could do anything. And so the energies worked with the family dynamics. She came back to me after that visit. She sat down and she said, you wouldn't believe the visit. She said, it was wonderful. She said, it was normal. And, <laughs> it was normal. And, it was normal. Yeah, it had never been normal. She said, and I stopped drinking alcohol. So I have had a couple of people have stopped drinking alcohol. They've stopped smoking. They stopped their sugar habit. Wow. The fast food habit was, was ended. I had a gentleman who was in a relationship. He was about in his 40s. And mm -hmm. he had been with his girlfriend for a number of years. Mm -hmm. but he, and it was toxic. And he felt like maybe there was something better waiting for him. But he oh, yes. felt a little guilty about leaving. Yes. And so, so he asked, can I work on his girlfriend? And the energies were not allowed to do that. But they oh. were able to work with the relationship. Mm -hmm. the dynamics of the relationship. And so I saw him or spoke with him a month later and he had left the relationship. He set okay. her up in her own, set her up in her own place. So he did it with a lot of integrity. He yes. started a new, a new career path and he said he stopped drinking alcohol. Yeah. And so now it's been about six months or so. He's in a brand new relationship. It's very wow. beautiful. It's very spiritual. They support each other. So he really embraced the yeah. option of, of what his future held, but he had to go and get it. Yeah. His future was not going to come to him. He had no. to leave and, and go embrace his future, which he did. It's waiting there. The thing about it is waiting there for you, Avilon. It's waiting and yes. it's like, hello, hello, we are here, we are here, we're here, you know. <laughs> and, right. and, and you have to recognize, hold on, somebody's calling me over there. Oh, hi, you know, <laughs> and just go across and say hello. You know, it's, it's, it's amazing. Everything you need, people think it's far away. It's all the way over there. It's how many years down the road. And while that may be, it is still there waiting for you. It doesn't matter if it's now, tomorrow, tonight, next year, next five years. It is already there. And so you know, it's the other for you to, to, to get it. Yeah. Yes. And the other thing is, you know, part of it for him, and, and it applies to so many of us, is that he had to realize that he's not responsible for her happiness. And, right. that, and that is such a core thing. We are each responsible for our own happiness. Own happiness. We cannot depend on someone else to make us happy. That's not their responsibility. And uh, part of what these energies have shared with me is that the reason they are, are here is to help us clear away the unloving energy so that we can return to our natural state, which is self-love. And when we're able to truly love ourselves, even with our flaws, our quirks, our, our imperfections, we still love and accept ourselves, um, then we are able to give the other person permission to love ourselves because it starts within ourselves. I now realize I am lovable. And yeah. therefore, I can let you love me because I'm able to accept love. Yeah. And I'll tell you something else that helped me a lot. This was a real life changer for me. So I'll share my other little secret. <laughs> Just one day, for some reason, the question came up in my, my, my mind and it said, who am I with 
24 seven. And it's like, well, I'm with myself 24 seven. That makes sense. And I realize <laughs> if I'm, if I'm with someone myself 24 seven, then I may as well be my own best friend. That's because right. who wants to be, who wants to be with someone 24 seven, who's critical, judgmental, grumpy. Makes and so sense. in that moment, I made the conscious decision to be my own best friend. Mm -hmm. And I have never criticized myself since then. And I realize I'm not perfect. I have faults. I have flaws. I have quirks. I break things. I say things I wish I hadn't have said. But my best friend says, well, let's look at this and see if we can fix it and see if we can do something so it doesn't happen again. But then let's move on. My yeah. best friend does not let me get stuck in my mistakes or my shortcomings. It yeah. helps me to move forward in a very healthy way. And I'm a much happier person um, because I'm not self-judging. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh my God, so we must be our own best friends. I love that. Because yes. you, can't, you can't have another best friend loving you if you don't even love yourself. You have to start with you first. Yes. That's and right. I'm, it starts with you. Uh -huh. it starts so that, that's what these energies help us do in a very loving gentle way is they help us clear that which yeah. is unloving mm -hmm. yeah beautiful you know, we're not you know we're, we're born in perfection i i would say but we, it doesn't mean we're meant to be perfect all our lives because when you have experiences you learn and grow and you learn from mistakes when a baby is learning to walk they fall but they don't go oh my gosh i fell i made a mistake i'm never going to get up again that's right no. <laughs> they you get know? going so, again <laughs> They just get up and try it again. Yeah. And they're not ashamed somehow. They don't be like, right. I'm looking to see who's looking at me. They really That's don't right. care. <laughs> they don't care. They're not busy judging themselves. And so, no. um, and so there's a lot that we pick up as we grow up yeah. about self-judgment. Self. The other yeah. thing here, I'll share one more thing with you. If, if you. No, no, that's fine. Okay. okay. So I also realized that one of my issues uh, was that I was judgmental, not only of myself, but of others. Of others yeah. and, and we're really taught that. We're taught to have an opinion. What do you think? How do you feel? Is this good? Is this bad? Is this right? Is this wrong? And so it's, it's ingrained in us. And so when I realized that I was judgmental, I thought, how do I fix that? Because it is such a habit. I don't even know I'm doing it. Yeah. And so I started with a, a baby step. And that is, if someone, let's just say they dress really funny, instead of saying, oh my gosh, look at how she dressed, that looks ridiculous. I changed the judgmental word to say, well, isn't that interesting how she dressed? Because for me, the word interesting is neutral. Yeah. And yeah. so I just started saying, well, isn't that interesting that they did that? Or isn't that mm -hmm. interesting that she said that? And it started to back me away from judging people. Yeah. And, uh, and it has put me in a space now where I'm, I'm more the observer and not the judger. And yeah. it, it's very freeing. It's very freeing because I'm not required to have an opinion of everything. Exactly. It's, quite free. it's quite free not to have to have one. Exactly. Yes. <laughs> the only person who's supposed to be judging anything is God. And I don't think he needs help um, to do his job. So I, I remember seeing a Facebook post or something, an image uh where it says god is not hiring yeah uh -huh. he's not hiring so yeah. he doesn't need help in terms of what he does so we have no right to be taken on what his responsibility is and on this earth judging anybody else because you will be i will be looking at you and, and trying to find your faults you will be looking at me and trying to find my faults it makes no sense that's what we spend our time doing when we could be doing other things come on you know it i i have faults too and and when you start judging somebody else it makes you seem aloof, like you're better than the person and you are no better than in any way than the person. We are all the same. We might be different colors, different hair, different whatever, but deep down we are still the same. Because when illness strike, it doesn't have a, a complexion, it doesn't have a shape, it doesn't have a size, it doesn't have an age, it doesn't have a, anything. Illness takes every one of us, no matter where we are from, background raised it doesn't matter you know so we need to be careful with that you know we need to be careful with that oh my goodness Avalon, we could talk all day <laughs> we can talk all day this is this is a beautiful topic and i want persons to really be inspired by it be empowered to take action and take action in the sense of uh take action on themselves in in in, in the sense of self-love 
when some when I say when you hear the word take action, some people feel, oh, get up and run, get up and get. But be still. Try to get rid of the noise. Try to love yourself more. Try to be more still so that you can tap in to that inner voice, that inner guidance, that source, as we call it. God, who whatever you want to call it, or whoever you want to call him or her. And learn more about yourself. Discover. I find it extremely exciting to discover yourself. You know, you just learn more and more about you every day. Sometimes, yes. it's, yeah. You yeah. know, I, I mentioned clocking in and being uh, in my waking hours, being who I am meant to be here. And so it is very important to be who you are and what you're meant to be because there's nobody else being you. You're the only you there Thank is. Thank God. And so <laughs> your, your job is to be you. And, and it doesn't mean you're going to be a perfect you. And so yeah. to, to give yourself some slack, some flexibility, to make some mistakes, to learn and to grow, but your only job is to be the best you that you can. And I'm going to presume and assume that each person is doing the best they can in each moment, just as I am trying to do the best I can in each moment. Each moment. And just as I am trying to do the best that I can in this moment. Thank you so much, Avilon. I really appreciate you. I appreciate the time. There goes my alarm. <laughs> okay. You know, for the second time because we have gone over time, but I normally do that. This is my show, so I can do whatever I want. And so, <laughs> well, thank you very much. I have enjoyed it and I appreciate the opportunity. It's been a joy. Thank you so much, Avilon. So, check out, I want persons to check out Avilon's website. Remember, she has two things giving away. Well, one specifically, but we end up with two um, with avilonbailey.com forward slash free. And of course, check out her website, avilonbailey.com. Thank you Thank so you much, Avilon, for being here. Thank you.